Let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. Now, if you are fully prepared for this exam, you should be able to answer two simple questions about this function right here. So we have f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. I'll show you these questions in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help preparing for the CLEP College Algebra test, check out my test prep course. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. I literally will cover pretty much everything that you will see on the CLEP College Algebra exam. So let's take a look at these uh, two questions about this function right now. Okay, so once again, here is our function. We have f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Now, I actually have more than two questions here for you, but these are my two main questions. I'll get to these in just one second. Now, again, uh, in CLEP College Algebra, you need to know a lot about functions. So here is my first uh, question for you. You can put your answers, by the way, into the comment section. So my first uh, question is, what type of function is this? All right, so kind of describe this function. Now, there's a few different ways uh, that you could do this, but what I'm looking for is something that starts with a Q. All right, so what type of function are we talking about? Well, we are talking about a quadratic function. So this right here is a second degree polynomial. So this is a quadratic function, which is a huge part of what, uh, you know, basically you're going to see on the CLEP College Algebra exam. All right, so quadratic equations, quadratic functions, et cetera, et cetera. Again, a very, very important part of the CLEP exam. All right, now my next uh, question for you is, what is the graph to this function? Now, of course, you can't uh, put your graph into the comment section, but you certainly can describe it. All right, so I'm not going to uh, cover everything about graphing quadratic functions, but basically what I'm looking for is a simple sketch, or at least you should be thinking about this. Here's x, here's y, and uh, what we're dealing with here is a parabola, but it's translated up 1, so the y-intercept here is 1. So we're talking about a parabola, something like this. All right, so this point, again, is going to be uh, 0, 1. That is the y-intercept. And all quadratic uh, functions have some sort of parabola as their graph. Now, we're going to need this graph here to answer these two questions uh, right here. All right, so my first question is, I'm saying that this is a function, and indeed uh, it is. But let's suppose I gave you this graph right here. All right, so here's the graph of this function. And I just said, hey, looking at this graph, how can you validate or prove to me that indeed this is the graph of a function? All right, so how do we know that this thing here is a function? All right, now there's a few different ways that you can answer this, but uh, there is a very, very simple way, something that you uh, definitely should know, you know, if you are fully prepared for the CLEP College Algebra exam. All right, so put your answer into the comment section, but the easiest way to validate that uh, we're dealing with the function is taking a look at the vertical line test, the VLT. All right, so again, functions is a huge part of uh, what's going to be on the CLEP uh, College Algebra exam. And the vertical line test is a simple test. Basically, it's a graphical test. If we draw a vertical line anywhere through a graph and it just goes through it one at one point, okay, well, that indicates that the graph here is a function. So you can see that uh, this parabola is indeed passing the vertical line test. Now, this is in contrast. Let me just kind of erase this here. Let's suppose I had uh, an ellipse or something like this. Okay, now if I asked you, is this a function? Well, if you draw a vertical line through this graph, you could see that it's going through twice. And there's a whole kind of set of reasons why graphically, you know, uh, this is uh, either proving this is a function or not a function. And you should, you know, basically understand those reasons as well. But uh, the vertical line test is the easiest way to uh, basically uh, see if you're dealing with a function or not. Okay, so if you have the graph of something, you can just use the VLT to uh, determine whether you're dealing with a function. Okay, so that would be the best answer for number one. Now, my second question is, what is the domain and range of this function? All right, so we have the graph here, and uh, the graph 
will uh, basically tell us exactly what the domain and range is. And now we're talking about the domain and uh, range under the set of real numbers. Okay, so let's start with the domain. Now the domain is the, uh, the set of all allowable input values into this function. Now typically when we're talking about the real numbers, unless we um, have some sort of condition that creates a zero in the denominator, and here we don't have a fraction, so we're not going to end up with a, a zero in, a de in the denominator. So basically that's one restriction that we have to look out for in terms of the domain. The other restriction is uh, having the square root of a negative number. So for example, if I add something like this, uh, the square root x over x as my function, well, uh, you cannot have f of 0 right, in this particular function because you would get a 0 in the denominator. And you can also, you would uh, not be able to have something like f of negative 4 because you would have negative underneath this square root. So these are restrictions here, but here we have no restrictions. So basically the entire real number set uh, is uh, the domain, all right? So there's different ways you can express that. But graphically, uh, the easiest way to kind of see this is that this graph is spanning the entire x-axis. So the x-axis is something called the independent variable. It is associated with the domain. And you can see this graph is spanning the entire x-axis. So the domain of this function would be all real numbers. There's different ways to express that, but we'll just kind of leave it like that. All right, now the range is a set of all output values. This is a dependent variable, and the range is dependent upon the domain. And uh, here you can see that this graph spans. We're looking, in terms of the domain, we're looking at this graph with respect to the x-axis. But now with the range, we want to think about where is this graph uh, spanning with respect to the y-axis? So if you look at the y-axis, this graph is kind of covering all points from 1 on the y-axis going this way. All right. So basically the range we can describe as all y's greater than or equal to 1. All right, so this is a very informal kind of uh, lesson or review on functions, but uh, if you got these questions uh, correct, well, that's very good. There is certainly a lot more on the CLEP College Algebra exam. Now, if you didn't get this right, just use this as feedback, and I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, really what you want to be fully ready for the CLEP College Algebra exam is to get into a real specific kind of a study program. So definitely check out my CLEP test prep course. Again, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the CLEP exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.